Hi, everyone. I'm Ray Richman, the News and Features Editor here at Gold Derby, and I am here today with Ashley Brooke, who portrays Margot Frank, sister to Anne Frank, in the Holocaust-themed eight-part Net Geo limited series, A Small Light. Ashley, um, welcome, and talk about what you knew about Margot Frank before this project. I never even knew Anne had a sister, did you? I didn't really know that Anne had a sister either. I mean, I knew a little bit. I have always had Anne's diary in my room since I was a little girl, but I think that I forgot a lot because I was told her story at a very young age. Um, and so I really had to start at ground zero when I started researching for Margot. And I just, I fell in love with her and her little quirks. I think, you know, I think she's a bit of the opposite of Anne in personality and she's more quiet and reserved and she always likes to follow the rules. But I think when they're, they go into hiding and they're breaking the law, I think um, it's so scary, especially when she's called to report to a German concentration camp only for herself. Her name was the only one in her family that was on that report, which makes her family go into hiding so much sooner. And I just, it's, it was really imagining what it would be like to be a 16 year old girl in those circumstances. And so, and before this, Ashley, whatever we knew about Margot, I guess came from Anne's diary, right? I mean, did that, did that make it harder for you as an actor to get a full picture of her and understand the person you were playing? Yeah, I think it was a bit difficult at first. I read Meep's account first because I knew that that was the perspective we were taking called Anne Frank Remembered. And then I read Anne's diary again. And it always, I always had to come back to that those were perspectives of Margot. And Margot actually had her own diary that unfortunately was not found. Um, and so I always try to go back to what would really have been in Margot's diary. And I really would have loved to have seen it. I think it would be such a completely different perspective than Anne. Um, and also Margot was so intelligent. And um, and I can just, I also part of my process was taking a few pages of Anne's diary and then writing it out in Margot's perspective. Um, so I had two diaries that came out with me to Europe when I was starting this project. One was my own, and then one was for a Margot diary. And um, I didn't know, actually, that Margot had her own diary as well that got what kind of lost in the in the chaos of the time. That, how, how did we, I guess, Meep, Meep had confirmed that, huh? Yeah. Um, and also it's in Anne's diary too, that that Margot had her own diary. Um, and yeah, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't found unfortunately, like many of the things in the war, but it was very so special that at least Anne's diary can carry out, you know, her legacy because she always wanted to be a writer. And so I think that that's really powerful. And, and so it you sort of alluded earlier for a second, uh, Ashley, as to how different Margot was from Anne. I guess much more conservative and sensible, and um, I mean, not quite as uh, not quite as as flamboyant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's also it goes to Tony and Jones writing on the show who are the showrunners and writers of many of the episodes of A Small Light. They were able to portray Margot when I was first reading the script of a, you know, how a 16 year old girl would normally act on a day to day basis, you know, having <clears throat> fights with her sister and the relationship with her parents, but also how it was to be a Jew and the Holocaust and the weight of that and the fear of that. Um, so, I mean, everything was on the page already. Tony and Joan did so much research for this project and spent so many years creating it. So it was just kind of taking what was on the page and bringing it to life. For those who don't know, A Small Light tells the Anne Frank story from a perspective of Meep Gies, the 
Dutch Gentile woman who hides and in her extended family in the secret annex. One of your most vivid scenes was the one, I think, uh, Ashley, in the opening installment where Belle Pally as Meep uh, led a terrified you on the bicycles through the Nazi checkpoint. That was just such a heartrending scene and it had to be heartrending to, to shoot as well. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, tapping into the enormity of that scene came from research and understanding Margot, but it was also the writing. And like I said, the writing was really aligned with any research that I had done and what how it was portrayed was on that page already. Um, but I also think that we shot some of that scene outside the actual and Frank family's apartment. Oh God, I had no idea. Yeah, so we shot the exterior of when they're biking away. That is really was their apartment. Um, so that there was definitely, we all felt emotional that day. Wow. The thing is, uh, Ashley, I think everyone, including particularly Jews like myself, felt like they knew the story of Anne and the secret annex, you know, up, down, and sideways. But this series provides such a, a new contemporary <clears throat> view of the whole thing that really makes it fresh and feel contemporary like it is, like it's today. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, I think me was a modern woman living in a non-modern world. And, you know, she's so like us, like I find a lot of myself in me, you know, she is falling in love and having problems with her family and friends. And she's the type of person that we can all see something in us. And I think what she did for the Frank family was such a brave and courageous act, but it also is an act that I think this series puts into question, what would you have done in this case? And, you know, she was fearless and Meep is a person that I would have wanted to be in this, in this scenario. And, you know, she chose justice in the right path, even in the face of fear. And I think that also speaks to what, what can you do today to be a light for others and to take care of the people around you? I would like to think that I would have done the right thing back then, but none of us really knows exactly. unless we're faced with that circumstance. You know, I know, Ashley, too, that you uh, have a unique perspective on the Holocaust because your beloved grandmother was a survivor. Um, talk about what you know of her experience, if you could, and how that may have informed your own performance as Margot. Yes, what was really special was that when I got this project, my family told me that there was a testimony and a video of my grandma's story. And the reason I had not really heard about her story was because when she was able to speak about it to me, she was I was too young. So she did not want to tell me at that time. And also my grandma, it was kind of discouraged to, to discuss anything about the war up until a certain time period. Um, and so I really hadn't heard the story from her. And unfortunately she developed Alzheimer's um, when she was older. So when I heard that there was this video of her and it's actually from the USC Shoah Foundation, um, I was so honored to be able to watch it. And I, I remember her discussing all the moments of fear, but she also talked about all of the moments of light that helped her to survive. And that just brought me back to Meep and how Meep was that hope and that light for the Frank family. And I think it helped me so much to step into character. Um, and yeah, it was also like, you wanna honor and respect the Frank family and Meep and Jan by portraying these characters, but it was also, you know, I wanna honor and respect my family's history because I know it's so, it's so close to home. So your grandmother was in, was she actually in a concentration camp? Yes. So she was in Bergen-Belsen, which was actually where Anne and Margot, unfortunately, passed away. And it also begs the question, maybe, you know, she saw them at one point and I don't know. It's. it's wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I you it's definitely 
it was such a special project to work on. They could have known each other. We just have, we'll never know. Wow. Yeah. Um, let, let's talk about for a second, uh, Ashley, about the Small Light production itself. How is it working with Bell and Liv Schreiber and Billy, is it Boulay? Billy Boulay, yes. Boulay, yeah. Um, uh, it looks like you guys had a great chemistry together, you and the, and the actress who played Anne. Yeah. So Belle is absolutely fantastic. She She's is, like a force of nature. Yeah, she is such an inspiration to me. And she's also the kindest and sweetest human being ever. And she's fun. And we had so much of a fun time together off set. But also, she creates this environment of huge comfortability when you're working with her. And she's so effort effortlessly goes from scene to scene throughout the day, changing completely from emotion to emotion and the stakes of the scene. And I just, I always wanted to soak in and absorb and learn from her. And that's exactly what I did. <laughs> um, and so same thing with Liev. He is so incredible to just take in and watch. And I think the biggest takeaway from working with Liev is I could tell that he really has a director's eye because he was a director himself and is a director himself. And I think that I learned a lot about how he handles the camera from a director's point of view and a storytelling point of view. And I think because of that, I actually, I was so lucky enough to be able to shadow every single director that we had on a small light. Um, and I learned so much through that process. And I also, that's kind of what I'm studying too at USC now. And and I've I've just learned a lot through all of that. And then for Billy, she is such a sweetheart. And we just kind of became sisters right from the beginning. And and she's I remember there was this moment between her and I where we just were in full hair and makeup and costume and we looked at each other for the first time and we just started laughing because we really didn't recognize each other. We really felt transformed in that moment. And and I think also it, she's just so easy to work off of and so lovely. And I cannot wait to see what's in store for her in the future. And you mentioned uh, going to USC. I know you were first year film student there, but uh, which is great. Uh, but you've yes. already <laughs> had this whole career leading up to now uh, uh, as a child actor. Um, uh, didn't you appear on Broadway in Dr. Zhivago when you were 10? Yes, yes. Wow. Um, there are actresses, as you know, that uh, go their whole whole lives and never make it to Broadway, and you're there at 10. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was kind of surreal because it, I did the network test for this project, College Decision Month, and... I remember having to tell colleges and universities what my pick would be in a span. I think I had two weeks left. And so in the contract for when I was doing the test, we told them that, you know, I'd have to know within five days if, if I was on this project or not, because I have to plan, you know, for college. And they said the next day and that, and also they were so, so, so lovely. And I loved the, the creative team behind it right from the beginning. And, and then it was really kind of nerve wracking because I graduated high school and three days later, I was being flown out to go to Europe, which I had never been to, I'd never been to Europe before this project. Um, and then to film it. And then also after now going back to LA and having a whole different experience of a college experience <laughs> was also another nerve wracking moment, um, but it's so different. And I think I've just learned so much from every, every experience. Um, and yeah, I think also I, Tony and Joan and Susanna, um, Tony and Joan, the showrunners and Susanna, the director, they have inspired me so much with what they do and 
their messages that they put out into the world. And what I'm doing at USC is actually learning about script writing and directing. And, and it's been really amazing because even as an actress, I've learned probably more than I've learned in many acting classes by going that route and doing that. So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been great. <laughs> it's been a ride. <laughs> and, and you're still getting cast in other things too. You, you're also <laughs> appearing in White House Plumbers. Yes. Uh, on um, HBO, you're G. Gordon Whitty's daughter. Yes, yes. Um, that's, it's interesting because that was probably a year and a half ago now, or yeah. These, maybe these things have a long, long lead time with their production. We absolutely do, I think. But A Small Light just had, was just such a quick turnaround that it was, it, but they're coming out at the same time on May 1st now. I was going to say, it's, 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 the <laughs> Ashley, Ashley, it's the Ashley Brook double feature. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, so how long, um, A Small Light had a, a quick turnaround. Uh, you guys were, you guys were shooting this um, last summer? No, fall? Yeah, so we, I think I started in, June, like very late June. And then we ended, I think early November, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm guessing you hadn't had a project that went that long before. No, I definitely had not. And it was also cool because we were like on location in Europe and, and it was just a completely different experience than being somewhere in the US filming. Um, but yeah, no, I had not, um, I actually, actually when I did the sound and music national tour. Oh, that's right. That, you did that at 11. That, <laughs> um, that was 10, 10 months, um, that we were touring. So that was actually oh, wow. the closest experience I think I had to, to doing a long form, um, but for TV, that was definitely the first project that took the longest. So White House Plumbers was a pretty quick, pretty quick shoot for you, though. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, it was lovely getting to work with Justin Theroux and Woody Harrelson, and um, but yeah, that was definitely um, a, a quicker shoot. And also, it was filmed right in New York. <laughs> right. So, and you, you're, you're. Well, no, you're not living in New York. You're going to SC now, so. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's kind of crazy because these are the last two weeks of uh, the semester, but I haven't been there because I've been with the show and, um, you know, we've been having some lovely premieres and trying to get the word out about the show now. Um, but no, being at USC, is, it's it's very special and I've I've learned a lot. Are you able to keep up with classes even with all this this heavy promotion for small light? Yeah, it's so funny. I'll be in hair and makeup, and I'm like, I have to write an um a paper. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I would love to talk, but I just am gonna pop in these AirPods, and I will talk right after I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Wow, <sighs> wow. Well, it's it's a it's a it's wonderful to be this busy. Um, yeah, you know. I know it's such a it's such a blessing, and I'm so so grateful, and I'm so honored to be telling, and being a part of of these stories. Well, it, it, it's such a powerful production, and you're terrific in it. So congratulations on the whole thing. Thank you so much. Um, and with that, we're out of time. Ashley Brook, um, thanks so much for your time. Ashley can be seen in a small light, beginning May first on Net Geo, and the next day streaming over Disney Plus and Hulu and in White House Plumbers, also on May 1st, because again, it's the Ashley Brook double feature. Thanks so much and best of luck at USC and in your career going forward. Thank you so much for your time. Nice meeting you. Mm -hmm.